Hey, what's up guys? Sick Designs here. And uh, today we're going to be talking about some new dynamic settings. And uh, I've already got a floor and a sphere in here. Uh, the floor's just got a simulation tag, or a rigid body tag on it. And the sphere has a rigid body tag on it. And uh, all I did to do that was right click, go to simulation tags, add a rigid body tag. Uh, so, as most of you already probably knew that, if we just play it uh, with a rigid body tag on it, the sphere does become dynamic, however, it just falls. It's it's pretty boring. And uh, for some projects, maybe whenever you want, whenever you press play, you want the sphere to launch or move left to right or side to side or do something different rather than just straight fall. Because, you know, like I said, that can be kind of boring. Uh, so to fix that, once we have the rigid body tag on here selected, we're going to come down to the dynamics tab and uh, check on custom initial velocity. And uh, initial linear vo velocity here, uh, these read from left to right, so X, Y, and Z. Um, so if we just change one value, let's say we turn the speed to, say, 80. Not quite sure which way this will move. Okay, so you, s you can see it lunge forward a little bit, just slightly. All right, so maybe that wasn't enough. So maybe we'll just we'll make this 500. Okay, now you can see it flies a little bit better. Alright, so let's start at this side of the screen. You can see it moves. We change this, say 600. Okay, now it kind of launches up a little bit. It goes up in the air. Say we wanted to go at like a 45 degree angle this direction. Okay, so now you can see it. Now it has rotation on it. Okay, now if we were to, let's say, uh, as soon as the sun freezes, bring this value down to zero, bring this to say 720. Now this sphere is going to have to is going to try to spin. Um, two full rotations before it hits the ground, and then the momentum keeps it going. So you can already see there. You know, that makes things a little bit more interesting, and obviously there's a lot more stuff you can do now, uh, knowing how to, you know, do this and whatnot. So there you have it. Um, also, what we can do is enable and disable dynamics at certain times. So if I go ahead and don't want this to be dynamic the second the animation starts, and uh, to uh, turn... Uh, dynamics off and have them come back on at a certain frame we're gonna right or right click on the enabled box so untick that and then we're gonna hold control or command if you're on Mac and right click on enabled and you'll see we have a red light second we press play okay it still has that um, rigid body tag on the sphere but as you can see here it's grayed out meaning that it's inactive nothing's going on say we wanted to get the frame Let's say 150, 160, we want this to become dynamic. So the frame before we want it to become dynamic, we're going to control click on enabled again so that the program knows that it still needs to be, uh, we don't want it dynamic. So at 159, it's not dynamic. Let's go to frame 160, make the change. So let's enable it. And if we do something like that, uncheck or check a box off like I just did right there you always need to control click again to tell it so I checked on enabled and I'm gonna uh, control right click again on enabled now if we rewind it and play it back you'll see the sphere just sits there but once it gets to frame 160 then it plays on so that's a good good way to keep things from happening when you don't want them to happen uh, you know because sometimes we don't always want the sphere or whatever to just start doing whatever when we're not ready for it to. So it plays through, uh, gets the uh, frame 160, and then then it uh, becomes dynamic again. Um, yeah, we've got some other stuff in here, like in case you didn't know, bounce and whatnot. So if we bring the bounce down to zero percent. And bring the ref the friction up to 1,000. Say I'm not quite sure what's going to happen here, 
but I'm guessing ball won't bounce hardly all at all. If anything, it may just stick. So let's find out. And uh, let's just go ahead, scoot this keyframe down a little bit, and make this playback a little bit faster. I don't know if I grabbed the right one. Okay. All right, and as you can see there, it uh, the ball just it rolled for a second, and then it just it just stopped. So it plays, and then it just sticks. So if I take the turn the bounce down on the floor and increase the friction to say 500 or 1,000 percent, I'm guessing this sphere, when it becomes dynamic, is gonna fall and stop the second it hits the floor. Okay, so it still rolls a little bit and then stops. Turn the friction down to say 0% on this and the sphere. Make the bounce about 500%. Let's bring the friction down to 20% on the sphere. Let's see what happens. And uh, while I'm at it, so we don't have to keep waiting. I'm going to get rid of all these keyframes, and to do that, I'm going to control shift right click, and that erases all of our keyframes. Uh, so we're back to a fresh start. And whoops, I forgot to check on enabled here. All right. All right, so there you can see uh, the the sphere. It gets launched, and then it just kind of it spins on the floor because there's hardly any friction there, and it just keeps sliding. And it'll probably just keep sliding, actually. All right, so we have that. Um, we've learned that. Another thing is, uh, real quick, that I want to talk about is I'm just going to do this uh, real quick and simple. Is um, another thing you guys might be having a lot of problems with um, is say you want something to fill up with whatever. Like, what we're going to do here is I'm going to press C. First of all, I'm going to get rid of this dynamic tab or tag on the sphere. I'm going to press C on this to make it editable. I'm going to come down to model mode, select. Let's go to ring selection, shift, click. Okay, make sure we have that all selected. And let's just get rid of this top half. Okay, so now we've got this basic kind of bowl object. Now, what I want to talk to you guys about is this right here. If I take this, uh, take a cube, just to kind of switch it up a little bit. Let's uh, size it down. And I'm going to uh, switch views here to get a little bit better view. Position it pretty much right over the center of this thing still a little bit too big okay now I'm gonna pull it straight up all right if I go ahead on the sphere and just right click add a simulation tag go to collider body logically you would think this cube is gonna fall straight into this uh, you know it's it's concave you know there's there's nothing there so you'd think it's gonna fall um, well it won't fall until I put a simulation tag on there you think it's gonna fall right in but watch Did you notice that whenever we press play skip ahead a few frames look at it it's like it there's nothing there and it's still hitting something it's not actually going in the ball that's because even though we just edited this and it, it appears as though there's nothing there, the system uh, isn't able to read that. It still is seeing this sphere as a whole. So the objects, any objects that interact with it, are going to interact as if the top half was still there, which it isn't. We don't want that effect. So the quick little fix for this is to go to the uh, simulation tag on the sphere here, or whatever we edited, and change the, under the collision tab, change the shape to static or moving mesh it doesn't really matter for this if we change it to static mesh whenever we play it you'll see now now the program uh, the system reads this 
as it appears, you know, it'll interact as it looks, so it actually falls in. So it'll fall in, do whatever. And that'll work with anything. Now, once again, we take the change this to automatic. Play it, it won't fall in. Um trying to think what else is if there's anything else I should talk about. Um oh yeah, the mass of objects. If you want to change the mass of something, um basically just go to the, the tag, go to mass, use custom mass, and then just type in a mass right here. So if we make this like 500, press play, and whoops, I need to uh, change this back. Did this for the wrong thing. Make the cube 500. And make this static mesh. That cube just became a lot heavier. And uh, maybe I can demonstrate this better if let's just say let's do this real quick and easy real quick let's scale this down as soon as the sun freezes go to MoGraph a cloner let's drag the sphere into the cloner let's make these dynamic let's go to cloner uh, object grid array and let's bring the count up to 15 by 8 by 14. Just something nice and random there. Just so we got quite a few spheres. Spread them apart. And stretch them out. All right, I'm going to drag this up, okay? And if we just press play, you're going to notice they kind of all shoot out. And that is because I don't have these quite spread out far enough. And they're actually inside each other, as weird as that sounds. And uh, that's impossible, so the system doesn't know how to handle it. Now they should just fall straight down. There we go. Okay, so to better explain my point, I'm going to make another sphere. And let's just make this a little bit larger. Set it just above this mass group of spheres. So simulation tag. Add a rigid body tag to this. Custom mass. Let's put a mass of one on here. Let's press play. See what happens. Okay, not a whole lot really, as you can see. Now, let's take this sphere, let's go to custom mass and bring this up to say 500, see what happens. Okay, so the sphere falls much faster, as you can tell, and it has a much bigger impact. And that brings up another point uh, that I'd like to talk about real fast. Another little quick tip that will help you out. You notice uh, every time when I go back and play this, the simulation is running fairly slow. And it's actually going wireframe right now because uh, there's so many particles that it has to calculate. And that's the main reason why it's running slow is it's having to do these calculations. And if you notice, every time I start this over and play it back, uh, it's playing back the exact same simulation. The, uh, the spheres are all rolling the same way, whatnot. It's going to happen the same time, uh, same way every time. However, the system doesn't know that. The system, uh, the program, thinks that uh, it has to calculate this in real time every time. So every time we start this over and play it again, the uh, system has to uh, calculate all the movement, uh, position of the spheres, every uh, dynamic aspect of the simulation in real time. Uh, and a lot of the time, this can become very frustrating uh, when you're trying to make changes and adjustments when it plays back so laggy and not so smooth, you know, it's really hard to s exactly see what's going on. Uh, so to kind of help fix that, what we can do is first of all, I'm going to bring down the frame so this won't take so long. Let's go to Edit, Project Settings, uh, go to Dynamics, go to Catch, and we're going to bake this. 
basically by baking, uh, the computer is going to go through, it's going to take all this information from the simulation and it's going to store it. And uh, whenever it has all this information stored, the computer has it right on hand where it can use it immediately. It knows where everything needs to be at what point in time. And uh, basically this will speed things up. Hopefully, I mean even though I'm recording, hopefully this won't be quite as laggy. It'll play back a little bit better. Alright, so you can see that did help a little bit played back a little bit smoother and we get a better idea of kind of what's going on here now granted I'm recording right now and uh, I got a couple other programs open so it's still running a little bit slower for me but if I wasn't recording this would be fairly smooth and you can see it's running back a little bit better uh, so if you're if you're getting real laggy if you're doing a simulation with a lot of particles it's becoming real laggy I would suggest you try that try baking the catch It'll have all the information, the system will have all the information stored, and it'll know what it needs to do quicker rather than have to calculate this as it happens, and you'll get smoother playback whenever you do this. Uh, for the most part, like I said, I'm recording, so not seeing a big difference, but uh, definitely helps. Uh, one last thing I want to stress, though, so after you bake a simulation, and you've got it how you like it, and or maybe you want to make some future adjustments, make sure after it's been baked that you clear the catch uh, if you do not clear the catch you will not see nor be able to make any any changes uh, so if I left that baked and tried to go in here and change the dynamics of the sphere or whatever you wouldn't see them and uh, you know that can really screw you up just, just make sure when you bake it you get what you want you clear it and uh, you go from there so if we play it back you can see it's not not playing back quite as smooth so by baking it it did help a little bit uh, so I think that'll cover it for this tutorial guys um, I hope you found some really useful tips in here that uh, you may have had questions to or uh, didn't quite understand um, if you guys have any uh, suggestions for future tutorials or have any questions uh, about this uh, specific tutorial uh, leave them down in the comments section down below I'll do my best to get back with you guys um, and help you out uh, any way I can. So I really appreciate the time uh, you, you've taken to watch this if you've made it this far. And um, as always, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would I would love that um, a ton. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys later. Uh, that'll do it for this tutorial. Peace out, guys.